Bolatinobu, 100 days of presidential iniquity. Dr. Adetokumbo, PSC. <laughs> Obviously, more to know. This Adetokumbo is, is, is lambasting this Tinobu very well. The, the thing is that every way me in Nigeria should speak out, it's not the time to keep quiet. Mm -hmm. So he says the 100 days of Tinobu in office is 100 days of presidential iniquity. Obviously, more thing. If these first 100 days of Tinubu's presidency are anything to go by, one can say without equivocation that Nigerians are in for a long time of pain and anguish. Virtually all of Tinubu's decisions so far have been egregious, whether nationally or on the international front. At home, on 29th May, the day of uh, his inauguration as president, Tinubu brazenly announced an end to petrol subsidy in Nigeria. Within hours of that hasty announcement, the price of petrol at the petrol fuel stations jumped by 300% from 185 naira okay, per litre to 500 naira per litre. The price keeps on going up, and today, 100 days later, the price of a litre of petrol has risen to 617 naira per litre. Virtually all aspects of life have been impacted negatively by the petrol price increase. Cost of transportation is the first to be impacted, followed by everything else, food, housing, medication, clothing, household items such as soap and cooking gas. The destructive consequence of the oil price increase is also evident on a macro level. Nigeria's economy is in grave danger of collapse. Companies are folding up unable to bear the cost of production. They are laying off staff in the thousands. Unemployment is therefore increasing exponentially. Even where they are not laid off, workers can't go to work because they are only unable to pay for transportation. Productivity is drastically reduced nationwide. The situation is so there that some state government offices and agencies have resigned themselves to operating a three-day instead of the normal five-day work five day work week. The reduction in productivity implies a reduction in the country's gross domestic product. Timbo's failure to understand that oil in the service of transportation is the lifeline of any economy is creating unbearable hardship for citizens and threatening to destroy the economy. Unfortunately for the country, Tinubu's missteps since taking office are not limited to the removal of a subsidy, consider the other currency policies and pronouncements. Okay, anti-education policies. Conventional thinking worldwide is that education is the antidote to poverty. It is by embracing this philosophy that India, South Korea, and Malaysia, for example, were able to pull their countries out of poverty, making them models of economic and social emancipation. In the last three months, Tinubu's attitude towards education has totally disregarded the role of education in human capacity building. By increasing fees in federal schools and universities, he has undermined the ability of parents to send their children to school and consequently reduced the number of the nation's productive workforce. His foreign, cur foreign currency policy, which has depreciated the value of Naira from one from one one dollar to seven hundred uh, to the dollar now one dollar to eight hundred eighty has had a chilling effect also on education from it from a to which foreign education costs are paid at the bank rate is no longer available since the bank rate of one dollar to four fifty has been eliminated now only education has also Online education has also been adversely affected because payment at the bank rate for online courses is no longer an option. On that Tinubu watch, the bank rate and black market rate are virtually the same. Another aspect of education which has been undermined by the foreign education policy, foreign education policy is travel. The legendary Chinese philosopher eh, Confucius long ago appropriately identify travel as the greatest source of education. By avoiding bank rate personal travel allowance PTA, 
Itinogo administration is inadvertently placing limitations on citizens' exposure and education. Discouraging travel also reduces potential revenue from tourism. Hmm. Immoral and reckless proposals. So from what we're seeing here, a lot has happened. And that is why this 100 days of Tinubu in office is classified as 100 days of presidential iniquity. And that is very, very bad. As in everything else, Tinubu will put the cart before the horse. He fails to realize that it is imperative for the government to provide an enabling environment for marketers before demanding taxes from them. Otherwise, operators of the informal economic sector will continue to be harassed and abused by local government touts as they are presently in the society. Hmm. A proposal to increase the electricity tariff by 40% is another one of the Tinubu's ill-conceived ideas. Such, as an in such an increase is hostile to citizens and detrimental to businesses. For the people already suffering from recent astronomical increase in cost of petrol and the overall high cost of living triggered by removal of petrol subsidy, an increase in cost of electricity will be another crushing blow. Wow. So reacting to what is termed punitive economic policies, Nigerian Labour Congress called on all unions in the critical sector of the economy and its 52 other affiliates to shut the government down on 5th and 6th of September 2023. NLC was determined to dramatize its opposition to Tinubu's uh, draconian economic measures. Nigeria Union of Petroleum Natural Gas Workers, Nupeng, National Union of Electricity Employees, Nui, Telecommunications and Communication Union, and National Union of Bankers, Insurance and Financial Institutions, employees um, have all come together to express their displeasure with Tinubu-led administration. With this September strike action, Nigerian Labour Congress called it a warning, which could lead to an indefinite strike action if Tinubu does not bring down the price of petrol and reverse his other anti-people policies. Hmm. So the fact remains here that the Tinubu's government is a menace to Nigerians. That is it. And somebody is making a comment here. He calls it 100 days of satanism. That is what it is. Tinubu, they say, is hitting ground and running. But just like it's rightly explained here, he's putting the cart before the horse. He's, on a, he's, he's, he's not intelligent and he's clueless. Does not really know how to run a system. The Bible said when the righteous is on the throne, people will rejoice. But when the wicked is on the throne, people will suffer. The satanic people have enthroned uh, the satanic, wicked, corrupt man on the throne. And we are suffering it. Exactly. Somebody say, you're on point there. Nothing to celebrate after 100 days in office except continual hardship in the land. Why Tinubu keep appointing ministers and special assistants for both meaningful and meaningless uh, portfolios? Thank you so much. How did Tinubu win this election? He didn't win election. That is the question. Those wicked satanic people that helped him rig the election were compensated. Hmm. My friend, nobody is against Tinubu. It is eyes seen. If you never feel the pains, then you are eating from his table. Eh? Lamentation from enemy of Tinubu. Can you do better? See them. They have come. I mean, why they don't know what they're doing. This is what they say about Buhari. Anybody that criticized Buhari was seen as devil. Today, we have woken up to the reality of destruction he brought to the country. Continue to talk like a fool that you are. Exactly. Hmm? Destruction witnessed and coordinated by the present people in power. They are now shifting the goalpost, blaming Buhari and his team of advisors. This is very, very bad. Absolutely very bad. So 100 days of Tinubu in office is 100 days of presidential iniquity, 100 days of satanism in governance. Thank you for listening. And let's have a comment as well.